what is behind the seed vaults, for example, the seed vault in Norway? Well, saving diversity is vital. In Navdanya, the movement I started 25 years ago, we save diversity as living in our fields, in our farms, because it's the only way it will be available to people. Now, seed is something that a handful kept in a seed vault in Norway will not be able to rescue a disaster because it will take 20 years of breeding and multiplication to get it to every part of the world where it is needed. Centralized frozen gene banks are not a solution to anticipating disasters. There's only one solution to have diversity in our farms and in our field to be constantly evolving and adapting this diversity as the climate changes because the climate is changing. If today we have a temperature and two, it's going to be two degrees higher, pulling out a seed that was adapted to two degrees less will absolutely collapse. But the seeds that have been able to evolve a percentage of a degree at a time or have been able to develop more resilience to drought bit at a time, that is the solution. Life is about adaptation, not about being frozen in a seed vault. It is human in a response to the, the thought that it is human innovation that will bring us through these problems, that all that genetic engineering does is provide us with the ability to speed up evolution because we do not have the luxury of time of evolutionary processes to continue working. We need to utilize innovation and the human intelligence to fast forward the process to assure a better future. Um, when genetic engineering is talked about as innovation and it is talked about as speeding up evolution, the two flaws in that argument. The first flaw is shooting a gene blindly into a cell is not an innovation, it's an experiment. And they don't even know whether that gene will get absorbed, which is why they have to add an antibiotic resistance marker, which then separates the cells that absorb the gene from the cells that did not, which means all our food now gets an antibiotic resistance marker in it and has the risk of creating antibiotic resistance. And because just like in an organ transplant, bodies refuse to absorb it. An introduced gene is rejected and is silenced and so they must add viral promoters. Viruses are added. So it's a highly uncertain experiment. But in any case, the ultimate traits of the crop outside the GM trait, which as I mentioned is only Bt cotton, Bt crops and herbicide resistant crops, the original plant the plant into which you put these traits has been bred conventionally. It has either been bred by farmers as an open pollinated variety or as a hybrid by a seed company. That breeding will still take the same amount of time that it took. Genetic engineering cannot make a shortcut. Genetic engineering is a tool for shooting genes. It is not a tool for breeding. So it is wrong and a scientific falsehood to make it look like it's about breeding and it's speeding anything it's up. It's speeding up irresponsibility, it's speeding up recklessness, it is speeding up an illusion that some innovation is taking place when all you're doing is engaging in a reckless, irresponsible experiment whose consequences you don't know and whose consequences you don't want to know.